Hello folks, I'm the Code Pilot. In this episode, we're going to be looking at direction and distance, traveling from one point on the display surface to another. But before we do, let's have a quick look at what the code will look like when we run it. So we click on the display surface and the circle travels to where we click. So let's not waste any time and have a look at the code. The first thing we need to do is set up some variables. X and Y will be the location of the circle on the display surface. And we'll set that location directly in the center. The next variables, PMX and PMY, are the previous location of the mouse cursor. And because we haven't had any previous locations of the mouse cursor, we'll assign the starting position as the X and Y coordinate. The next set of variables are dx and dy. They hold the direction value we need to add to the x and y coordinate in order for it to travel to the mouse position. And the reason why we've assigned zeros is because we don't have a direction to travel in yet. The next variable is distance, and that is used to calculate the number of times we need to add dx and dy to get to the mouse position. So now let's go down to the main loop and enter some more code. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out whether the mouse button is being pressed. So we'll assign the mouse buttons to M using the mouse get pressed function and using the if statement, check to see if M at index zero is true or false. If it's true, then the mouse button is being pressed. And if it's false, then the mouse button isn't being pressed. And we also need to check to see if distance is false or if distance is zero. So if M at index zero is true and distance equals zero, then we can assign new coordinates for the circle to travel to. And on this line, we assign the mouse position to MX and MY. This can be done by using Pygame's mouse get pos function. In this next line, we get the angle in radians to the MX and MY coordinates. This can be done by using the maths ATAN2 function. Now, I don't pretend to know exactly the maths behind it, but the function requires two coordinates, y and x. Now, I'm not sure why y is first and x is second, but that's just the way it is. And the values of those parameters need to be absolute values, which is why we deduct PMY from MY and PMX from MX. And the order of those deductions needs to be specific as well, because if you deduct MY from PMY and MX from PMX, you end up with the complete opposite angle to what you need. And in this next line, we're calculating the distance between the two points, MX and MY and PMX and PMY. And we're using the math function HIPOT to calculate the distance, which is basically the square root of A squared plus B squared. And again, this function accepts absolute values. So we'll just deduct the MX and MY from PMX and PMY. And because the hypot function returns a floating point, we'll round the number down to a whole number using the int function. So before we go any further, let's have a look at some diagrams to show how these functions are working. So you can see the circle at PMX and PMY and the mouse cursor at MX and MY. And as you can see here, this is how we calculate the distance between the two points. But the hypot function only requires the horizontal distance and the vertical distance between the two points, which is why we deduct the circle position from the mouse position. So let's now look at what the ATAN2 function returns. If the y coordinate is negative, then the angle in radians will be negative and vice versa. So in this particular example, we can see that MY is less than PMY. So if we deduct PMY from MY, then we end up with a negative number. And that means the radians are also negative. Let's now go back to the code. So what we want to do now is we want to get the values we need to add to the circle's X and Y coordinate in order for it to move to the mouse pointer. And to do this, we use two math functions, cosine and sine. The X coordinate uses the cosine and the Y coordinate uses the sine. Now, the function requires one parameter and that is radians. And we get the radians from the ATAN2 function. So let's see what's returned from those two functions when we pass certain radians to it. So in this diagram, the circle represents 360 degrees or two times pi in radians. So let's see what's returned when we pass zero to sine and cosine. 
Here you can see cosine returns 1 and sine returns 0. If we add those values to the circle's x and y coordinates, then you'd expect the circle to move to the right. Passing 1.57 to cosine equals 0 and passing the same value to sine equals 1. And if we added those values to the x and y coordinates of the circle, then we'd expect the circle to travel downwards. Here we returned minus 1 and 0 and add those to the x and y coordinates, we'd expect the circle to travel left. And 0 and minus 1, the circle will travel upwards. So why don't we have a look at a working example. So here we have the coordinates for the mouse and circle and we calculate the distance using the math hypot function. And next we get the angle to the mouse pointer using the math a tan 2 function. You can see the radians are negative, that's because my is less than pmy. If you deduct those values you end up with a negative number. And to get the direction values we use the cosine and sine functions with the radians that were returned from the a tan 2 function. So let's get this circle moving. So by adding the dx and dy values to the circle's x and y coordinates, you can see that the y value is reducing and the x value is increasing. So let's now go back to the script and see how we utilize the distance and direction values. And because we've got the direction and distance values from the previous mouse position to the new mouse position, we can now assign the new position to the old position for next time. And of course, you don't actually have to use PMX and PMY, you can just use the circle's X and Y coordinates. The next thing we need to do is we need to check to see if the distance is greater than zero. If it is, then we can deduct that value by one until it is zero. But while it isn't zero, we can keep adding the DX and DY values to the circle's X and Y coordinates. And when distance finally becomes zero, we'd expect the circle to have reached the mouse pointer. So what we need to do now is draw a circle at those x and y coordinates and a circle representing the point at which we clicked on the display surface, but only if distance is greater than zero. I'm just going to hurry this bit along because we've already covered circles in a previous video. So if you want, you can go check that out at the end of this one. And there we are. That's the end of all the typing. So let's go over to the command prompt and run this little beauty. So it's d and d dot py. And there we go. So we click on the display surface like that. And it travels in the direction of that click. Brilliant. Now there are some changes we can do to speed up the movement process or the traveling from one point to another. And that just involves a few minor changes. The first one being a speed variable and we'll set that value to three. And the next one is we need to divide the distance by our speed. There we go. Divide that by 3 and also multiply the dx and dy values by 3. And that's it. So let's just have a quick look and see how that works. So when I click on the display surface, you'll see that the circle is now traveling a lot faster. There we go. And obviously, the more you increase speed value, the faster it goes. Anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something useful. And remember, all the scripts are available on my Google Drive. The link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave a comment. I love comments. And you know me, I'm not bothered about thumbs up, thumbs down. I just like to know that there is someone watching. So take care and I'll see you for the next video.